everyone, Lotus Moon here, or, well, still at this point, Midnight Lily Moon. Yeah, I, I haven't found a counter for this spell just yet. So, Midnight Lily and I are still stuck as one whole being, and it's not entirely fun. But, we'll manage somehow until I can find a way to you know, untangle us and everything. Anyway, it's time for the next chapter to fire Team Odium. It's been a while since the last one, and after talking with Atranos in private, it's just been agreed that I take my time between readings, because the story right now is a bit at a standstill, so it's just going to take a while to get through everything. Alright, anyway, without further ado, let's get to the next chapter. Fire Team Odium Written by Atronos the Last Chapter 22 Aftermath Prokhor stood slowly, opening his eyes and looking around him. He had fallen during the fight so he hadn't seen anything that had happened when the Primus had reached the castle. Ghost? The Titan called, and the little white machine floated over to him. Hey, he responded, flying by his soldier. What happened? Did we win? As far as I can tell, yes. The Cabal are in full retreat, and Elena is going around, reviving the rest of the team. The human gave a sigh, turning to look at the castle. The spire of it had fallen during the onslaught, but the rest of it remained intact. Though, the same couldn't be said for the city. Multiple homes were crumbling, and many more were already completely destroyed. Shards of crystal covering the streets. In all directions he looked, he could see the bodies of war mages that had fought alongside them. Not a single one of them moving. Damn. What about the others? Prokhor asked, moving towards the courtyard below the castle. He gave a nod and turned to face the streets leading to the building. Even more pony bodies lay across it each wearing a colored robe. He tried to ignore them as he walked forward, dreading the thought of coming back through there to search for injured. It took only a minute to reach the castle. The three other guardians, along with the... The three other guardians, along with Prome and Flamelight, were standing there. They were talking with each other, the conversations becoming clearer as he grew closer. And what's the death toll exactly? Curvis asked Flame. I haven't seen any of the war mages that went into battle with us. They might still be out there, but I doubt there are many left. The blue pegasus replied. He had taken his helmet off, allowing those around him to see his face. Curvis sighed and looked around, spotting Procor quickly. Hey. You good? Procor, ne Procor nodded. Yeah, I'm fine. What happened? I've never even heard any of the Cabal army retreating, especially with how well they were doing. Churchill happened, Exodus said, joining the conversation. Elena and multiple ponies say they saw columns of smoke puncture two of the ships. They came from space, and my ghost has detected swaths of frames moving on the city. All signs of war mind. Frames? How did any of this get here? No other war mind network was detected when we went through the Rasputin's database. So, how did this one never get added? Prokhor queried. No idea, but we need to figure out what our next step is. 
We apparently have a war mine online, and we didn't even need to evacuate that bunker. With it, we can end this today, Exodus said. Exodus, you know we can't, Curvis said. We got immensely lucky with this attack. We need to take a step back and plan out our steps. We can't rely on the war mine to do everything. The warlock looked away slightly, and the others staying quiet as the Exo thought on what they had to do. If we aren't going to move immediately, our next best move would be to access the bunker. If we can get in there, we can rearm, refuel the ships, and figure out what we can do with the war mind. He eventually said, looking at all of them. Hmm, sounds good. We can get a lot of ponies from the camps around Silesium and transport them to the bunker via our ships. I'll go and tell the Vol what we have discussed and what happened here. Curvis said, receiving a nod of confirmation from his companions. With his job now set up, the Titan walked away from them, the roar of his ship becoming louder as he, as he dropped in from orbit. I think I'm going to stay here and help the city rebuild, Elena said, still in her sniper. I'll come with you. There might be ponies that, that need help, Exodus said, walking away with her. With the others going in several ways, Prokhor figured he could find something to do on his own. He requested his ship be brought down from orbit and boarded it when it arrived, jumping into the pilot seat and firing its engines up. His first thought was to go see the war mind Exodus had mentioned and hopefully assess how much damage it had taken during his time up in orbit. And with nothing else coming up, he brought his ship back up to orbit, the planet sprawling out below him. Ghost, where's the warm line right now? He said. A waypoint showed up on his HUD as he spoke, pointing him towards a distant dot hovering above the planet. Pushing forward, he moved closer, the dot becoming a more detailed machine. Various antennas sticking out of it in the center, a huge barrel pointed down at the surface, the surface of which was a dull red from the shot it had recently fired. The hull of it was fairly messed up from passing meteorites and other debris, but the majority of it seemed useful. Even the antenna looked in pretty good shape. Hello? A male voice called through the comms. Procore didn't recognize the voice, but it certainly didn't sound cabal. Are you here to help me repair? Uh, n no. I came up here to see how damaged you were. Procore replied. I see. Well, feel free to look. There is little I can do to stop you. They both went silent as the Titan ship moved around a machine. The holes within its plating were nothing that couldn't be repaired, though some of them were dangerously close to the war to the war mine's barrel. What's your name? It asked after a long while. Procor. That's an interesting name. I've never heard of one like that. I'm Churchill. Pleasure to meet you. But when I understand you helped us push the cabal back. Procor question, moving his ship away from Churchill. If that is the name of that alien race, then yes. I apologize for my lack of accuracy, but I had to use the war sat V to fire, which isn't the most accurate way to fire orbital strikes. I can imagine it would be, but you still saved us. We owe you, Procor said. I was simply doing my job, though having some shots from the surface moved up here would be most certainly appreciated. Of course, I'll have my team get on that when we manage to reach your bunker. Proker gave one last sweep around the orbital weapon 
before flying backwards, getting a good look at the entire thing in one go. You're pretty beaten up. You sure you're going to be able to be alright for when we need you? My combat efficiency is still at optimal level. I will have the accuracy necessary to fire upon the enemy should you get the beacon from Elizabeth, Churchill said. And how many shots do we have? I can't imagine these beacons are unlimited. The bunker is armed with 50 beacons and 50 shots ready for loading. There are a couple extra storage zones around my bunker that hold more shells, but the only beacons are the only beacons available are within the bunker. So we have 50 unless we can build more beacons. Got it. I'll head back and let my team know about what we have talked about. And, um, thanks for helping us, Proker said, turning his ship around. You're very welcome. I look forward to hearing from you soon. The Titan smiled and pushed his ship forward, re-entering the atmosphere with ease. As the ground hurtled towards him, he opened his comms and pulled up, using the momentum gained during the descent to increase his speed without having to increase power to his engines. Everyone got some news. He began getting notifications that the others were opening their comms, and when the third notification sounded, he continued. I just spoke to the warm mind. Turns out, he can't fire properly without his beacons, which are inside that bunker. There are also multiple storage areas nearby that can provide us extra shots if we need them. Sounds good. We shouldn't need any... We shouldn't need that many, but it's nice to know that we aren't limited to heavily, Curvis commented. I've managed to get in contact with some of the ponies that can help us dig. And... We have rescued the remaining war mages, Exodus said. There are only 26 left. And their leader? Prokor asked, his ship coming into the Crystal Empire's line of sight. We haven't found her. If she managed to survive, she has been either hiding or she ran from the battle. I don't see her as one to run, the Bronze Titan said. You may want to keep searching. The comms went silent after that. As the guardians returned to their jobs, Procor's ship flew into the city and hovered near the castle, allowing him to teleport down with his ghost. On the surface, ponies were moving all over the place, some helping to clean up the debris from the roads, some trying to find loved ones, and others crying for the ones that hadn't made it to the castle in time. With nothing else to do, he joined in the help to clear the streets and find any hurt ponies within the buildings, walking slowly through the crowds of ponies. Is this even a victory? He thought as he looked around him, his eyes crossing over the masses of ponies. Shaking his head, he moved onward, quickly being pulled aside by some ponies, pulling the breeze from, hurt po from a hurt pony. How long do you think it will take for them to get to you? Churchill asked. Providing they have the manpower? A day or two. If they don't, I would guess a week. Elizabeth replied. Are you able to move those frames to the Fender bunker? A day can be a long time. Ask in a week. We can't allow these aliens to discover you. They won't find me. That I can assure you. Even with people walking to move, even people working to move the dirt from the top of the bunker, they seem far more focused on attacking cities. Churchill went silent for a moment, thinking on the situation. Are any of the surrounding bunkers still accessible? Storage Zone, Storage Zone Five will was built into a mountain face. So, providing the rock hasn't crumbled around it, the shells should still be there. It may help us to let them know about that. 
having spare shells would allow me to keep defending these cities. Understood. I'll notify them when they arrive, Elizabeth said, switching off her comms. Churchill had little to do but watch the being on the surface go to work repairing the city. Watching them was fascinating, as they clearly were not humans. There was some data sent up by Elizabeth that hinted at that, but he wasn't sure how reliable it could be for, for but he wasn't sure how reliable it could be from 700 years of possible corruption. His war sats didn't have cameras good enough to look too close to the surface, but he swore he could see chunks of buildings being moved with nothing touching them. Further examination showed that each time this happened, the object would be surrounded in a colorful aura, each one having a different color. After a few minutes passed before... A few minutes passed before he decided to forget about it. He had bigger things to worry about, and watching the res residents of a city was certainly not among them. The Primus stormed into the bridge of the last surviving carrier, the crew within barely noticing him as they scrambled to get the ship out of there. Where is that weapon? He called out, gaining the attention of his crew. In orbit. Probably above us, sir, the legionary said, kneeling before him. Get as many ships as you can up there and eliminate it. We cannot allow that thing to halt our plans. I, um, I'm afraid that will not be possible, sir. The Primus looked down at him in unbridled anger. What? This carrier has taken heavy damage to its hull, leaving it compromised, and the others contain the pris and the others contain the prisoners who would surely perish should we take should they be taken into our breathable atmosphere. We will have no method of retaliating against this machine. Their leader gave a slew of curses, turning to the front of the bridge. With the position of it, he could see across the hull of the craft. Huge fires and deep holes covered it. A dead cabal a dead cabal lay upon the upper portions of it, many being workers that had moved up there during the assault. Prepare the engines. Prepare the engineers. I want the ship back to orbital combat as quickly as physically possible, he commanded, the crew immediately rushing to their consoles to relay his orders back to the other carriers. Cadence and Shining looked over their ruined city. With the aid of the Guardians, the monsters were running, and the ponies had been returned to the city to find their families. How will we recover from this? Cadence whispered. We'll recover the same as we always have. Shining whispered in return, hugging his wife. The heart isn't broken and the Guardians are working to defend us. This isn't over yet. The Alicorn smiled, returning the hug and holding it for a few moments. We should really get down there. Shining nodded and stepped back. It's going to be all right, remember. They walked out of the castle after that, little being said as they made their way down. When they reached the bottom, they looked around. Not many ponies were looking at them, as they were more focused on finding others or helping in the cleaning efforts. So where should we start? Shining asked. We can use some help calming these ponies down if you wouldn't mind. The duo turned to find the blue and black robed guardian walking towards them and his weapon on his back. Oh, Exodus, correct? Cadence asked, smiling at the sight of a being she knew was helping them. That's right. We've been working and doing our best to get the injured to safety, but it seems the ponies are getting spooked by us. It would really help if you could assure them they are safe. Of course. I'll go help. I'll go help talk to them, Shining. We should split up anyway. 
The pink alicorn said, giving her husband a quick hug. All right, but be careful, Shining said, returning the hug once more and watching as she trotted away into the crowd of scared ponies. Turning back to the guardian, Shining spoke again. So what exactly was that destroyed? So what exactly was it that destroyed those crafts? There is a war mine in orbit on, in orbit of this planet. War mines are a network of war mines are a network built during the golden age that were used to defend planets the people thought could use could be used as homes or that were touched by a traveler. They are incredibly powerful and are able to fire upon both the surface and objects in space, Exodus explained. Then, why didn't it stop them from arriving in the first place? Well, it was deactivated till now. But thanks to us coming into contact with it, the AI within the bunker seems to have activated it again. Though, we still need to get it, we still need to get down to it. Shining gave him a confused look. Then what's stopping you? If it is as powerful enough to end the fight in three attacks, then surely it would be a good idea to reach it. It's, um, it's buried beneath the earth. Unless we can move it aside, the bunker will be too covered by it to assist us. The unicorn nodded slowly, thinking on what had been said. I guess I'm ponies to help you reach it. This is our fight as well, and we will do what we can to help end it. Thank you. We had been trying to figure out how we can get going to get willing ponies to aid us, so having some help sent to us would move our plans along greatly. I'll go gather as many as we can spare and have them rally just outside the city. They will know what you do when they arrive. Just take them to where you need them and they will get started, Shining said. Exodus nodded at that. We can do that. Now, I should get back to helping the city. Thank you again for your help. Shining smiled. And thank you for defending us. Curvis, Chrome, and Flame Light walk through the streets of Despectus, hoping to find their two Cabal allies. They have been searching for some time with little sign of them. Are you sure they're even here? Flame asked. Positive. Exodus wouldn't lie to me. And... I have heard from a few ponies that they do in fact live here, Curvis said. But we've been looking for some time now. We haven't seen them at all. Then we keep searching. We absolutely, if we absolutely cannot find them, then we'll ask the town's leader. Flame sighed but kept looking around him. Another, after another half of the, Half an hour of walking, they came across a newly refurbished hall. Its door had been rebuilt as well. If the surrounding architecture was anything to go by, making it significantly bigger, nearby the ground had been pressed down by an incredibly heavy object, large enough for it to be a dropship. Looks like we found the place, Chrome commented walking towards it. <sighs> About time. Feels like my clothes are gonna fall off. Flame grumbled, following Chrome and Curvis. Quit complaining. You're going to be working much harder than this if you want to help us. Curvis sighed and banged on the door when they reached it, ignoring the two ponies bickering behind him. Heavy footsteps could be heard on the other side before a heavy before the heavy door opened, revealing the Vol in his full combat armor. Ah, uh, Hello again. He looked down at the human. Hey, you busy? We need to talk, Curvis said. We weren't doing anything particularly important, so please come in. Naval turned to the side to allow the entrance, watching as the three 
of them walked in and looked around them. The smell of freshly cut wood was still present, permeating the air as they moved towards the large table, the only one, the only being sitting there being the centurion. The sound of the door closing behind him, behind them could be heard as the wall moved over, sitting beside the centurion. The wood creaked below him, but it held just enough against his weight. So what is it that you wish to speak with us about? Laval gasped. There has been an attack upon the Crystal Empire. We were able to defend it thanks to some assistance, Curvis said, trying not to think about how that wood stool could support something so immense. Oh, have more cabals seen through the Primus's lies? Not that I'm aware of. There is a war mine in orbit, and it has been brought back online. The Vogue looked at the Centurion in shock before turning back to the Titan. If there is a machine up there, then why didn't it help us before? My team could have been saved. It was brought back online because Exodus managed to speak with its AI. Until that happened, it had remained deactivated and invisible to both our scans and the Cabal ships. The ball sighed, leaning back slightly. So how do we proceed? Even with this machine on our side, we can't use it until the Cabal carriers are free of prisoners. That's something we're going to have to spend time working out. We're currently focused on actually re reaching the bunker, and when that happens, we can create a plan from there. I see. We will do our best to help create a plan of action. Do you need help getting to this bunker? Curvis gave a short nod. If you're offering, yeah. It's buried underground, so we have to dig away the earth before we can access this door. Hmm. We can aid with that. Where exactly is this bunker? The Titan turned to his side, his ghost appearing there. Can you give them the coordinates? Of course. One moment. He said, his companion said, turning to the, the Cabal. I will send the location to your HUD if that works. Mm, that should do it. The Vogue replied. Nothing was said for a few moments as the ghost worked, giving it to Cabal the location they needed. Got it. You will give us the pro to the Scions and meet you there. Laval said, standing up. Curvis and the two ponies also stood. Sounds good. Thanks for your help. It's no issue. The sooner we kill the Primus, the better it will be for everyone. Curvis smiled behind his helmet. <laughs> Can't argue with that. With that, they left the building, the Cabal moving to the side to await their dropship. The Guardian and his pony companions made their way back to the town towards Curvis's ship that had landed on the field surrounding it. You sure we can trust them? Flynn questioned as they, as they walked. Why wouldn't we? They've been helping us since we met, Curvis said. Well, what if they decide to go to this Primus and give him the coordinates? If they know about it, then they would probably attack it. If they plan on doing that, I'll kill them before they can speak a word of it. The only reason I am siding with them is because we need to help. Badly. I've got no intentions of becoming friends with them. Chrome looked up. Why not? They're clearly not trying to hurt any pony. They want what we want. Curvis was silent for a moment before he responded, his head looking forward. Because they're kind killed the only being I loved. The pony's eyes went wide, but nothing more was said. Neither of them wanted to piss him off, knowing the damage he could do should he want to or need to. They w their walk to the ship remained silent, neither of the ponies knowing what to say. As they reached it, multiple ponies could be seen getting closer to get a look at the craft. A few of them jumping when the lights on its wings swept near them. Curvis continued to walk, ignoring them. As he got closer, a few ponies noticed him, 
backing away from him and his ship. Without a word, Curvis's ghost teleported the three of them on board, the Titan taking his seat and removing his helmet. Team, I've contacted our allies. They're going to be there's going to be a dropship near the bunker. It's friendly, he said through the comms. No problem. I've got some planes coming as well. We should be there in about twenty minutes, Curvis said. Exodus said. While you do that, me and Elena are going to stay back here. When we have done all we can to help the city, we'll join you at the bunker, Procor said. With their plans said, Curvis raised his ship into the air, turning and flying in the direction of the bunker. He tried his best not to think of what happened, but no matter how hard he tried, the face of Callus wouldn't leave him. There was That was the first time in a long while that he had ever said he truly loved her, and it was to two alien beings. The thought that he found it easier to tell two aliens that the actual exo was crushing than the actual exo was crushing to him. Curvis, his ghost asked as they flew, drawing the Titan's attention to him. He was hovering at his shoulder, looking at him. Want someone to talk to? He shook his head, returning his focus to his front, looking out of the small viewing window. Maybe later. We have bigger things to worry about. And that was chapter 22 to Fireteam Odium, written by Atranos the Last. Sorry for my mess ups, and sorry it's taken so long to release this story, every pony. I actually was kind of waiting for any more chapters to come out, but it's still at a standstill at chapter 28. As things stand, I don't completely know yet if it will continue after that. But if it does, of course you will know. Also, as much as I really don't want to do this, for the months of August and September, I believe I should go on a hiatus. With October and in tandem month of Merkab right around the corner, there's still so much to do and it feels like me and my team have probably cracked the surface. So I want to focus all of my attention on that and I do hope you all can be patient with me and wait. As I've said before, I want October to be the month that you have truly waited for and hope that everything turns out well. I am Lotus Moon, or as I stated earlier, in this case, still Midnight Lily Moon, and I, or rather we, would like to wish you all a good morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are, Abby Pony. Good night.